Hey guys, so today my goal is to make an AI to play Super Mario Bros. Let's check the AI algorithms that will help me achieve it. So here's the AI chart and we can see that machine learning is a special kind of AI and we have deep learning which in turn is again a special type of machine learning. Then we have reinforcement learning. In our case, making an AI is equivalent to developing intelligence from scratch for Mario to succeed in the levels of the game. It is similar to teaching a baby learn to play Mario. The way a baby learns to play a game is by experiencing the bad and the good in the game. The baby remembers that hitting a turtle face to face will make him lose and he can avoid that situation by jumping over the turtle. These are the experiences that a baby remembers to play in the next game and it will use its memory that hitting a turtle is bad for itself to proceed in the game. Any AI problem where we need to learn to move around an environment is best modeled. This is a reinforcement learning problem. Everything in computer science is 0 and 1. Audio, image and video everything is made up of bits of 0 and 1. We'll break down this problem in numbers. To make our AI, we can just go and open up our PS3 or PC to write the reinforcement learning codes, right? We need an environment where our code interacts with the game environment. OpenAIGM is a toolkit for developing and comparing reinforcement learning algorithms where users can create different environments to test reinforcement learning algorithms. Christian Cotton made this amazing OpenAIGM environment for Super Mario Bros. It is in his GitHub repository. I'll be using this game environment for Mario in OpenAI Gym, which was developed to emulate the Nintendo Entertainment System NES version using the NES Pi emulator. We got the game to build our AI. Now it's time to work on developing the algorithm. In short, reinforcement learning is the study of agents and how these agents learn by trial and error. It formalizes the idea that rewarding or punishing an agent for its behavior makes it more likely to repeat or forego that behavior in the future. This is the agent environment interaction loop. In the agent environment interaction loop, we have an agent which interacts with the environment through an action A at time t and the agent after interacting with the environment sends a reward. To learn about the environment, the agent needs to explore. The only way we can find out about the Goombas are bad and the power-ups are good is through trial and error and feedback. We should learn some terminologies before starting with reinforcement learning. Agent In our case, Mario is our agent. Our agent is the brains of the operation, that is our algorithm. It is what is going to interact with the environment. Then we have the environment, that is the game levels. The levels of Mario that we are playing. The agent exists within the scope of the environment. It is the enemies of the screens and the blocks that makes up the world. It is the clock that is ticking and the score that is going up or down. Our agent's goal is to interact with the environment in such a way that it gains a reward. Actions In our case, actions are jump, duck, move left or right, fire off a fireball. The point is, each of these actions will alter the environment and will result in a change. Our agent can observe these changes, use it as a feedback signal and learn from it. An agent impacts its environment and changes its state without being able to do this. An agent can never actively influence the state, receive any interpretable reward for how its action positively or negatively influences the environment or even learn to take better actions in future. The set of all valid actions in a given environment is often called the action space. Some environments like Atari or Go have discrete action spaces where only a finite number of moves are available to the agent. Other environments like where the agents control a robot in a physical world have continuous action spaces. In continuous action spaces, the actions are real valid vectors. State. These changes that our agent observes are changes to the state of the environment. The new state may generate a reward signal. 
the state holds all the information about what's going on in the environment from what we can observe. Things like where our agent is, our current score, our enemies on the screen all play into what the state of our environment is currently. Combining together the actions the agent took, the changes in state and the potential reward received from the change in state, the agent begins to build a working model for the environment that they are exploring. An observation is a partial description of a state which may omit information. Reward The reward signal is how we measure the success of our agent. A reward signal can be positive or negative thus allowing our agent to measure if an action was good, bad or neutral. The point is that our agent takes in these reward signals, measures how the performance of the goal currently is and shapes its learning based on this feedback so that it might further work to alter the environment so as to maximize what future rewards it may receive. In Mario, a good way to measure a reward might be the score. If the agent learns that when it jumps and lands on an enemy, it gets a point boost and can no longer get killed by the said enemy. That is a good thing to learn. It also might learn that if Mario falls down into a hole, the game is over and there is no future opportunity to gain any more points or to win the level. These are things that the agent may learn over time. The more it interacts with the environment, the more it learns. Feedback is received as a time delayed reward signal as the observed change in state and the reward that can be calculated from it. The agent must be able to explore this uncertainty and to reason about why a reward was given. Policy A policy is the heart of our RL system. It is the way our agent behaves given the current state of the environment. Our policy will dictate what an agent will do given a state of the environment. We can say that a policy is a rule used by our agent, that is Mario, to decide what actions to take. It can be deterministic, which is denoted as or stochastic, which is denoted as policy is essentially the agent's brain. In our AI chart, the sweet spot between reinforcement learning and deep learning is called a deep reinforcement learning. In deep reinforcement learning or deep RL, we almost always represent the states and observations by a real valued vector, matrix, or a high order tensor. For instance, we have RGB matrix of its fixed values for an image. The state of the robot might be represented by joint angles and velocities using the vectors. In deep RL, we deal with parameterized policies, policies whose outputs are computable functions that depend on a set of parameters, that is, the weights and biases of a neural network, which we can adjust to change their behavior via some optimization algorithms. We often denote the parameters by theta and rewrite our policy as Deterministic policy. In simple terms, it means that for every state, the agent will know and have a clear defined action that it will take. That is, we know for sure that we will go for action A from state X. In mathematical terms, a deterministic policy is a function of the form that is a function from the set of states of the environment S to the set of actions A. The subscript D only indicates that this is a deterministic policy. For example, in a grid world, the set of states of the environment S is composed of each cell of the grid and the set of actions A is composed of the actions left, right, up and down. Given a state S which belongs to the set S, policy of S, pi of S is with probability 1, always the same action, example up, unless the policy changes. Stochastic policy. In simple terms, it means that for every state, the agent does not have a clear defined action but has probability distribution for actions to take from that state. That is, the agent has 10% chance of taking action A, 20% for taking action B, 70% for taking action C from state S. It means that the agent doesn't have a clearly defined action to take but has some probability of taking actions. A stochastic policy is often represented as a family of conditional probability distributions. This is from the set of states S to the set of actions A. A probability distribution is a function that assigns a probability for each event. In this case, the events are actions in certain states, and such that the sum of all the probabilities is 1. This is true. 
it is a conditional probability distribution over actions given that the state is n is the size of the set of the states of the environment the two most common kinds of stochastic policies in deep reinforcement learning are categorical stochastic policy and diagonal gaussian policy Categorical policies can be used in discrete action spaces while the diagonal Gaussian policies are used in continuous action spaces. The two key computations that are centrally important for using and training stochastic policies are number one, sampling actions from the policy, number two, computing log likelihood of particular actions. Sampling refers to selection of a subset of actions from the set of actions A and we find log likelihood for computational convenience. From bias theorem, we have probability of B given A equals which is the conditional probability of B given A. To put it simply, if A already happened, probability of B given A tells us how big of a chance B would happen. Probability of B given A is also called the likelihood. Log likelihood is just the log of probability of B given A. We need log likelihood because in some applications, people would assume that the likelihood is a Gaussian distribution or a gamma distribution. This distribution consists of exponential terms. Let's consider this example of normal distribution. And when we take the nature log of them, the power part will drop down and it will be convenient to do calculations. If we want to find where the likelihood is maximized, that means we need to find where the derivative of the likelihood is zero. But the derivative of a positive function is zero, exactly where the derivative of its logarithm is zero. And the log of this exponential function has a much simpler derivative. Categorical policy Categorical policy is like a classifier over discrete actions. To work with categorical policy, we build a neural network similar to a classifier. Input, observation, followed by hidden layers. There is a final linear layer which outputs logics of each action. Finally, followed by a softmax layer to convert the logics into probabilities. Now logics or the log odds is the logarithm of the odds p over 1 minus p where p is probability logic creates a map of probability values from 0 1 2 minus infinity infinity probability of 0 0.5 corresponds to a logit of 0 negative logit corresponds to probabilities less than 0.5 positive logits to probability greater than 0.5 the logits are the vector of raw, non-normalized predictions and after passing through one softmax function, it becomes a vector of normalized probabilities with one value for each possible class. If we are in a situation where Mario can move only left or right, with the observation as input to the neural network, suppose we get logit values out of 16.917 for moving right and 0.772 for moving left. Higher means more likely, so we need to move right, right? It is not a very efficient way to decide which softmax we normalize them as. This result is normalized and better. Categorical policy number one sampling. We got the probabilities of each action from the neural network. Frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow have built in tools for sampling. Number two, log likelihood. In a vector with entries equal to number of actions, we can treat each action as indices to the vector. The log likelihood for an action A can be obtained by indexing into the vector. Diagonal Gaussian Policy A diagonal Gaussian policy is based on a diagonal Gaussian distribution, which is a special case of the multivariate Gaussian distribution but with covariance matrix having elements only in the diagonal. As a result, we can represent it by a vector in the diagonal Gaussian distribution. Okay, let's slow down. Multivariate Gaussian distribution or multivariate normal distribution, also called the joint normal distribution, is a generalization of the one-dimensional normal distribution to higher dimensions. One definition is that a random vector is said to be k-variable normally distributed if every linear combination of its k components have a univariate normal distribution. A random vector x is multivariate if any linear combination of the random variables x1, x2 to xn is normally distributed, that is, has a normal distribution for any constants a1, a2 until an. In other words, 
if z is another vector that is a random vector whose components are all standard random variables there exists a matrix a and a vector mu such that for x to be multivariate normal it has a mean vector mu such that where e of x is the expected value or mean of x x also has a covariance matrix satisfying where covariance of xi xj is the covariance of xi and xj furthermore x is completely defined by mu and sigma so a multivariate normal distribution of x is represented as in diagonal gaussian policy it always has a neural network that maps from observations to mean actions so if we have mean actions and standard deviation and a vector z of noise from spherical gaussian distribution we find a standard deviation from the covariance matrix and a spherical log gaussian distribution is a gaussian distribution with mu equals and covariance matrix equals it is called a spherical gaussian distribution since the probability distribution has a spherical symmetry it is represented as diagonal gaussian policy number 1 sampling an action sample can be calculated as where denotes the element wise product of two vectors standard frameworks have built in ways to generate the noise vectors such that torch dot normal or tf dot random normal number 2 log likelihood the log likelihood of a k dimensional action a for a diagonal gaussian with the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma is given by for derivations we have to check out a textbook trajectories also known as episodes or rollouts a trajectory tau is a sequence of states and actions in the world tau equals the very first state of the world is randomly sampled from the state state distribution sometimes noted as rho naught state transitions can be deterministic which by the way depends on the most recent action a of t or stochastic actions come from an agent according to its policy reward and return We have talked about reward before. Let's dive in and look a bit more in depth into reward and return. Rewards are given depending on action's outcome. We have learned that when Mario collects coins or bonuses, it receives a positive reward, and when it falls or being hit by an enemy, it receives a negative reward. When Mario just wanders around, the reward it receives is zero, as if to say you did nothing special. But there's a problem here to be able to collect rewards. Some non-special actions are needed to be taken. Mario has to walk towards the coins before collecting them. So an agent must learn how to handle postponed rewards by learning to link those to the actions that really caused them. The reward function R depends on the current state of the world, the action just taken, and the next state of the world. The reward R T equals. Sometimes it is simplified to just the dependence on the current state or state action pair. The current goal of the agent is to maximize some notion of cumulative reward over a trajectory we denoted by r tau. This total sum of rewards the agent receives from the environment is called returns. We can define returns as r t plus one is the reward received by the agent at time step t zero while performing an action a to move from one state to another. I would like to talk about two important returns: finite horizon undiscounted return and infinite horizon discounted return. Before that, we'll have to learn about task, task and reinforcement learning. Tasks can be episodic or continuous. Episodic tasks. These are the tasks with finite number of states, and they have a terminal state. Example: a racing game. We start the game and play it until the game is over. This is called an episode. Once we restart the game, it will start from an initial state, and hence every episode is independent. Continuous task. These are the tasks that have a no end. That is no terminal states. Now it's easy to calculate the returns from the episodic tasks as they will eventually end. But what about continuous tasks? As it will go on and on forever, the return form sums up to infinity, and infinite horizon sum of rewards may not converge to a finite value, and it is hard to deal in equations. So how do we define returns for continuous tasks? Enter discount factor gamma. The value of gamma lies between zero and one. And allows us to determine how much importance is to be given to the immediate reward and future rewards. Helps us avoid infinity. A value of zero means more importance is given to the immediate reward, and a value of one means more importance is given to a future reward. In 
practice, a discount factor of 0 will never learn as it only considers immediate reward and discount factor of 1 will go on for future reward which may lead to infinity. Finite horizon and discounted return. It is the sum of rewards in a fixed window of steps. Our tau equals infinite horizon discounted return. It is the sum of all rewards ever obtained by the agent, but discounted by how far off in the future they are obtained. This formulation reward includes the discount factor gamma belongs to 0, 1. Our tau equals problem formulation. Whatever the choice of return measure, and whatever the choice of policy, the goal in RL is to select a policy which maximizes expected return when the agent acts according to it. To talk about expected return, we first have to talk about probability distributions over trajectories. For a stochastic policy and a stochastic environment transition, the probability of a t-step trajectory is the expected return is 10. The central optimization problem in RL can then be expressed by where pi star being the optimal policy. Value functions. It's often useful to know the value of a state or a state action pair. By value, we mean the expected return if we start in that state or state action pair and according to a particular policy forever after. Before proceeding further, let's understand what is off policy and on policy. On policy methods attempts to evaluate or improve the same policy that was used to make decisions whereas off policy methods evaluate or improve a policy different from one that was used to generate the data. Therefore, off means of the original or previous policy. We will get back into this. Now let's talk about value functions. There are four main functions of note here. Number one, the on policy value function, which gives the expected return if we start in state S and always act according to the policy pi. Number two, the on policy action value function, which gives the expected return if we start in state S, take any arbitrary action A and then forever after act according to the policy pi. Number 3. The optimal value function, which gives the expected return if we start in state S and always act according to the optimal policy in their environment. Number 4. The optimal action value function, which gives the expected return if we start in state S, take an arbitrary action A, and then forever after act according to the optimal policy in their environment. A point to note here, when we talk about value functions, if we do not make reference to time dependence, we only mean expected infinite horizon discounted return. Value functions for infinite horizon and discounted return would need to accept time as an argument. The optimal Q function and the optimal equation. Optimal action value function Q star S A gives the expected return for starting in state S, taking arbitrary action A and then acting according to the policy forever after. The optimal policy in S will select whichever action maximizes the expected return from starting in S. As a result, if we have Q star, we can directly obtain the optimal action A star of S via if there are multiple actions which maximizes Q star, in which case all of them are optimal and the optimal policy may randomly select any of them. Markov decision processes Each state the agent is in is a direct consequence of the previous state and the chosen action. The previous state is also a direct consequence of the one that came before it and so on until we reach the initial state. Each one of these steps and their order holds information about the current state and therefore hence direct effect on which action should the agent choose next. But there is an obvious problem here. The further we go, the more information the agent needs to save and process at every given step it takes. This can easily reach the point where it is simply unfeasible to perform calculations. To tackle this, we assume that all states are Markov states, that is, we assume that any state depends solely on the state that came before it, and the transition from that state to the current one, the action performed and the reward given. 
It's also important to remember that when using the markup assumption, data is being lost. In complex games such as chess or go, the order of the moves might have some implicit information on the opponent's strategy or way of thought. MDP or Markov decision processes obeys the Markov property. Transition solely depends on the most recent state and action and no prior history. An MDP is a 5 tuple where S equals the set of all the valid states. A equals the set of all valid actions, R is the reward function, P is the transition probability function with being the probability of transitioning into states as that if we start in state S and take action A. Row note is the starting state distribution. Bellman equation. While we still retain the Markov state assumptions, the recursive nature of the Bellman equation allows reward from future states to propagate to far off past states. All four of the value functions obey this self-consistency equation called the Bellman equation. The basic idea behind Bellman equation is that the value of the agent's starting point is the reward it expects to get from being there plus the value of wherever the agent lands next. The Bellman equation for the on-policy value functions are where the Bellman equations for the optimal value functions are If you already know the expected reward for each action on each step, we will choose the sequence of actions that will eventually generate the highest reward. We call this cumulative reward as Q value or quality value. This equation states that the Q value yielded from being at state S and selecting action A is the immediate reward received RSA plus the highest Q value possible from state S test, which is the S test is the state we ended up in after taking action A from state S. Now that we have covered the basics of RL terminology, we will learn about the reinforcement learning algorithms in detail that will help us make our AI in the next video. Till then, take care.